Hi everyone, I'm Pat Prokop, retired meteorologist with this tropical weather update for Thursday, September 22nd. You know, it's been relatively quiet in the tropics over the last several weeks, but now with major hurricane Fiona passing well to our east and a small tropical storm with the name Gaston in the far eastern Atlantic, a new storm is trying to form in the Caribbean. And if it does, as many of the global computer models are suggesting, it could affect our region of southeastern Georgia and southeast South Carolina later next week. So let's take a look. So here's a current look at the tropics. There is Hurricane Fiona with 130 mile an hour winds. You can see the eye uh, is getting uh, redefined once again. Bermuda's right over here. It looks like this storm is going to be passing uh, just to the east of Bermuda, the eye itself. But this is a very dangerous side of the storm as well. That's going to be going right over Bermuda tomorrow. Meanwhile, the storm is due east of us, and that's generating a large swell that's affecting the southeast United States, including the coast of Georgia and South Carolina. I have more about that coming up in a little bit, uh, a little bit later. Meanwhile, let's take a look at a wider field of view of the tropics there. And there is Gaston over here, way out in the western Atlantic, and no threat to just about anybody. And there are a few weak tropical waves, um, uh, one emerging off the coast of Africa, and, and there you have another one west of the Cape Verde Islands. But this is the one in question. It doesn't look like much right now. Uh, it's actually a broad area right here of circulation that's trying to develop. And this is what the computer models are picking up on. Now, the National Hurricane Center has this area, as you can see right here, under a threat of development and a high probability that we could see development in this area for the next uh, five days, up to a 90% probability that something's going to develop. So let's take a look at some of the computer models that are associated uh, with this. And first of all, the GFS or the Global Forecast System, which is the US model. And I'm over here in Tropical Tidbits uh, on their website. And I have a link to Tropical Tidbits in my comment section below. Uh, it, it's, it's really good. If you want some good uh, meteorological information and computer models and other information, uh, this is a good uh, website to visit and to support. I do support them. Anyway, here's the uh, Fiona right here at the time. And, uh, over here is that system now in the far southwestern Caribbean Sea. Now, if we go in uh, forward in time on the computer models, let's see what it does with this. It takes the storm, well, of course, takes Fiona out of the picture, but takes the storm and shows it developing uh, over into the central and then western Caribbean Sea, crossing the Straits of the Yucatan just to the western tip of Cuba, and then curves it northward into the uh, Gulf of Mexico and has it intensifying as it goes over that almost hot water of the Gulf. And uh, this will be by uh, mid-afternoon on Thursday, according, according to the model here. And then it brings it up to the west of Georgia, the center uh, of uh, the circulation, and drags it northward up into uh, the Appalachian Mountains. But it goes, uh, it's to the west of us, but that puts us on the eastern side of the storm, which is always a bad side to be on with any tropical systems. And so that would give us a threat for severe weather on Thursday and Friday uh, and going into Saturday. So depending on the speed, uh, it could last for several days and drop a lot of rain. Uh, one of the uh, things about these storms lately, the last several years, is the slow motion that a lot of them have been having, dropping very heavy rains. So let's take a look at the icon. Uh, I believe that's a German model. Anyway, it has the storm developing in the Caribbean and then curving northward toward the southern tip of Florida and then curving off the coast of uh, Florida uh, to the east of Georgia. Well, actually this only goes out to seven days, 180 hours. So looking at the CMC, the Canadian Meteorological Center, uh, it shows the model, the model shows the system developing in the Southwest Caribbean, moving to the Central Caribbean, and then crossing a little bit further east uh, in the western portion of Cuba, and then curving toward the north, toward the southern tip of Florida, and then crosses Florida, and then moves up the uh, just off the coast of Georgia and making landfall right around, well, not in a good lot location, just around the mouth of the Savannah River uh, and moving northward. So we, that one certainly, if it pans out to be this uh, case, it's not a good picture. And this would be Friday, Thursday night and Friday morning. 
so that, that would be a bad situation there. So let's take a look at the other model that I have available, the European Center for Medium Range Weather Forecasting. And uh, this shows a different story from the Canadian model and different from the uh, global forecast system, the GFS, but it shows it cutting across western Cuba, going into the southern tip of Florida, and then moving east of the Georgia, South Carolina coast, up the, just off the coast of the United States. Now, a lot of the models seem to be drifting a little bit further eastward over the last uh, 24 hours. So you have to look at the trends. You know, we're still seven days out, so we've got to keep our minds uh, open uh, as to where this system will go. Here's the computer models. You can see how they uh, are spreading out. And usually you just don't know much what's going to happen when you have this large spread in the models. Uh, if they're really tight, like right around in here uh, at this time frame, uh, then you have some confidence. But when they're spreading out all over the place like this at this time frame, uh, you really just have to keep uh, sitting down and watch what's going to happen. You really just don't know. So anyway, there we have the tropics right there. There is the uh, Fiona with about 130 mile an hour winds, uh, pushing warm conditions from the Atlantic further northward up into the North Atlantic. And then you have this system here, which doesn't look like much right now. And the computer models are saying, keep an eye on it. I will continue to watch the tropics for you and let you know whenever there could be a weather threat to our area. Now, the main threat for today through Friday will be from Hurricane Fiona passing well to our east, but generating a strong swell affecting our coast. Now, this swell will produce storm breakers of four to five feet and generate strong and dangerous rip currents. These currents can sweep even the best of swimmers away from shore into deeper waters. Inexperienced swimmers should remain out of the water due to these dangerous surf conditions. Now, if you should happen to go into the water, swim near a lifeguard. If caught in a rip current, relax and float. Don't swim against the current. If able, swim in a direction following the shoreline until you break out of that current, then swim toward the beach. If unable to escape, face to shore and call or wave for help. I will continue to monitor this new Caribbean storm, which will most likely be named Hermine and could affect us around Thursday and Friday of next week. Please stay informed with uh, these tropical threats by also uh, watching your favorite local television station and or reliable news sources. You can find me on my website of savannapat.name. I post a lot of weather information up there and on my Weather and Nature Facebook page and on Twitter at Pat of Savannah and on my YouTube Weather and Nature channel as Patrick Prokop. I have links to all of these in the comments section below where you too can leave your comments if you want. If you like this video, please hit the like button and even subscribe and ring the little bell so you'll be able to be notified whenever I upload new videos. Same thing with my Heavenly Backyard Astronomy channel. And speaking of the Heavenly Backyard Astronomy, that's my main YouTube channel. There I post videos from my large telescopes outside in the garden looking at the planets, colorful nebulae, star clusters, and even those distant galaxies. It still amazes me as to what I can see just outside from the Heavenly Backyard Garden in my backyard. Well, thanks for watching and see you later on Facebook or YouTube.